Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video I'm going to go over sending a float value from the Nexion display back to the Arduino. This is the fourth video in this series. I've done three other videos on different ways of sending a float value from the Arduino up to the Nexion, and this one is just the opposite. I really only have one way to do this, or I'm only showing one way to do this. This isn't really something that I've ever had to do for any reason. I just came up with this way to do it if I ever needed to. The Nexion doesn't have the ability to use float values anyway. It only works with integers. I'm going to start in the Nexion. I have a pretty simple setup here. I have a slider and as you move the slider back and forth it takes the value of the slider and puts it into the value into what Nexion considers to be a float value. In the float value itself, I have the decimal point set to two places. And you use the VVS attribute to do this. And it's down here. For a long time, I thought it was WS, but it's VVS1 is the attribute for the decimal places on the right. And the VVS0 is the attribute for the places to show on the left. And you can get some really funny results. If I change this to two, it just chops off some of the numbers. It starts at the far left and it starts at the far right and it works its way in with the number of digits. If you just leave it at zero, it will default to um, whatever characters are left. We're gonna use this to send the value back from the Arduino to confirm that it was converted into a float. And then the slider, when we release, this is when we're gonna do most of the work. The first thing we're gonna do is take the value of the item labeled x0 and move it into a variable that we have set up as value. All three of these values or these variables are text so they'll just display it as text instead of a number or an integer. In the second line here we're going to take the VVS value, in other words the decimal point, and we're going to add it into the other variable. And then this is the variable. The third variable is what we're going to send to the Arduino. And we're just going to start combining things together for it. So we're going to set that value equal to the word float. This is where you would have to put in a unique identifier if you had multiple float values you were sending. But in this case, we're just going to put the word float. And then we're going to add the plus equal here. We're going to add the decimal, which should just be an integer zero through whatever you're wanting to use. Won't be able to go over five or six, but for now we're going to use two. We might bump it up to three. And then finally, on the very end of the string, or the send value variable, we're going to add the value itself, which is the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We're just going to add that to the end of it. And then we're going to send it out, the serial port, to the next one. And then the Arduino will take that data and parse it. I'm going to compile this and run it in debug just to show you the output on it. So when I click and slide this, it doesn't show any output on the simulator return box down there, but when I release it, we get this line here. I'm going to change it over to a string. We get the word float like we have it coded to do, and then the next digit is the decimal place, which is 2 over 1, 2, and then we have the value itself, 20205. So that gets sent out to the Arduino. Now I'm going to pull up the Arduino and go over that code. We're going to work with three variables, the divisor, which is what we're going to divide the number to in order to get the decimal place, and if there isn't one, it'll be divided by one, which will give us the exact same number we start with. I have this string here, data from display. If you've seen any of my past videos, you'll understand what that is. If not, you'll understand it as we go through it. And then the decimal places is going to be the number that's returned. If you remember, we have the word float, and then we have a, uh, a, an integer and then we have the value itself. We need to take that integer out of that string and we're going to put it in the word into this variable decimal places. All we're going to do in the setup is set up two serial ports. I'm going to run them both at 9600 baud. Serial 1 is going to be to run the Arduino built-in serial monitor and serial 2 I have set up to the connection itself. The first section of the main loop I've had in a bunch of other videos. If you go through any of my other ones, you'll see this. Um, if there's data available on the serial 2 port, in other words, the port coming from the connection, then we're going to execute what's in this. And then while there's data available, we're going to collect that data and stick it into this variable, data from display. 
And then just for test, I print out it, just so I can go back and view it and see if there's an error. And then later on, I can comment that out if I was doing actual code. But it's nice to see the data coming in from the Nexion and compare it to what I'm sending from the Nexion and make sure they match. And after we've collected the data, we're going to test for the substring of 0 through 5 and make sure it's equal to float. I'm going to go to a spreadsheet here just to go over substring real quick. The command substring can take one or two variables. If you put one variable in it, it, takes, it starts at that point and it takes everything after it. So if we put substring 0, it would start at the very first digit right here and it would take the entire string. But in this case, we're going to take substring 0, comma 5. The second variable shows the end of the string or the area that you want to take. So in this case, it's 0 through 5. But the strange thing about substring is the first variable is 0 based. If you look down here, it starts at 0 and goes up to whatever it is you want to go up to. I put 14 for here. But the second number, it's, it starts at 1. So in this case, we're starting at 0, which is the F. And we want to finish at 5, which is the T. And sometimes that can get a little bit confusing. But you have to remember in substring that the first is 0 based and then the second number starts at 1. We'll come back to this when we get to the decimal place. So if that data is float, then we want to execute what is in between these curly braces. So the first thing we want to do is configure the divisor. What we're going to divide the number. Because if you remember, the, the value that's being sent is without the decimal point. It's the whole thing. So the first step in, in configuring the divisor is pulling the decimal places from the substring or from the string that is sent. And in this case, we're looking at 5 comma 6. I'm going to go back to the sheet here, and the float is always going to be set. That's going to be five characters. But 5 will be the first one, and we want to go to the sixth string. In other words, one character. And I put D in for the decimal. And then the value is going to start at 6, and it's going to be the rest of the digits. So we want substring 5 and then comma 6. And that's what we have here, substring 5, 6. But it's going to be pulled out as a string, so we need to convert it to an integer. And then we'll store it in decimal places. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to take that number, and as long as it's not 0, if it's a 1, then we're going to divide the number by 10 which will move it over. It will move the decimal place one place over to the left. If we divide it, if the number was two the decimal places, we would want to divide it by 100. So we're simply going to take the divisor, which we currently have set up to one, and we're going to multiply it by 10, however many number of times of the decimal place that's sent to us. So if, it's, if the number is three that's sent, it'll be 10 times 10 times 10, which will be 1,000. Or in our case, we're sending 2, it's 10 times 10 is 100. So we're going to take that number and divide it by 100. Then we're going to print that out. We're going to print that divisor out just as a test to the local serial monitor. And then after we've printed out the divisor, we're going to create our value itself. Out of, this, out of the data from display, we're going to get the substring 6. And if you just have the 1, it's going to take everything that's left. And we're going to turn it into an integer and then we're going to divide it by the divisor. And I could put a 2 there. I don't have to send that 2 from the Nexion, but you'll see why later when we make a change in the Nexion, everything else will be automated. So if you had multiple float boxes or X boxes on the Nexion that had different um, VVS1 variables, you would just send it, and then this code would automatically decide where the decimal point should be. So we're going to take the data that we bring in that integer, and we're going to divide it by the divisor, and then we're just going to serial print it locally first. So we're going to print the value is equal to, and then the value, and then the decimal places again here. So we print it to the right degree, to the, to the point, to the decimal point, one, two, or three. Then here's where we send it back. The item on the next one is t0.text, and then we have to use the escape quote. And then we're going to send the value again with the comma and the number of decimal places we want to show, and then another quote. And then we have to send the three FS. When we're all done, we have to set the data from display back to nothing or blank. And we've got to set the divisor back to one. I'm going to compile this real quick and make sure it works. I actually had somebody um, send a comment about um, the editor and I having a little contest here. So 
We were even when we stopped, so we'll see how I do and maybe start that up again. Of course, he's going to call me a cheater because I cut and pasted it, but I just say that's too bad for him. If I figured out a way more accurate, then that's good for me. So it compiled. I'm going to upload it to the Arduino. Okay, we're back over on the next in here, and we're still in this debug mode. What I do is if you come down here and click it on user MCU input, it uses the, the uh, other COM port. If you look down here, six is the Arduino, and five is that secondary one. You can set your baud rate here. We have it set at 9600, and just hit start. And nothing should happen, because the only time we're gonna send anything to this box, which is that T0, is after we've sent something from the Nexion to the Arduino. And that should only happen when I release off of here. I should be able to slide this back and forth, then we should get an output here, and then we should get the value right here. After we're done, I'll pull up the serial monitor on the Arduino and lay it next to it so we can see the data going back and forth. But I want the box spread a little wider here so we can see this data down here. And you can see that here we send that float with two decimal points and the value is 31245. 312 and we get the value back. I'll set this to string and you can see TO text equal and this we need the quotes in the string and that's why we put those escape sequence in there and it's 312.45 so it works works pretty well but as I said before we should be able to go into the next now without touching the Arduino and move the decimal place over one and it should work. So in this editor here if I go down to the select the float Go down to this VVS1 and change it to 3. You'll notice it doesn't change the value at all. It just moves the decimal place over. And now we'll run debug again. But this time I'm going to pull up the serial monitor too. I have the serial monitor over here. And then I have the display over here. As I slide it back and forth, we're hoping that we get a, uh, a decimal point of, uh, to 3 places. And we do. And you can see I, I sent it over correctly. And the divisor value is 1000 with a value of 30.670. So this works really well. Like I said at the beginning, I really don't know of a purpose of ever sending a float from the Nexion to the Arduino, but it may come in handy for, for somebody out there. And if it works, great. And this will probably be it for my sending floats back and forth between the Nexion and the Arduino. If you have any questions, you can put the comments in the YouTube video, or you can go to cheapcontrols.com and feel free to submit a question there. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.